Alright then, welcome back to another battle report. Uh, Kings of War battle report. This is a 2000 point battle played on Universal Battle. It's my elves versus the Ratkin. Uh, as part of the um, Call to Arms UK Kings of War tournament. So this was round two, um, playing against a guy called Martin. I want to say Martin Garbino? I don't know. Um, really nice guy. Um, quite new to Kings of War as well. Very new to Kings of War as well. Um, so if you recall, the purpose of this tournament was to test out the uh, Clash of Kings 2019 rule set, uh, the new armies, and to see uh, how the units performed. Um, I had been playing uh, Ratkin in the previous round, as you, uh, if you recall. Um, please feel free to check out my previous report. However, um, since uh, Martin was playing Ratkin, and I just played a Ratkin versus Ratkin match, which I lost, um, I thought I would go back to Elves, since there were some new Elf formations that I could try out. However, I kind of hated them. So, yeah, <laughs> this I think, I believe my list was entitled uh, Sucky Elves or uh, Useless Elves, something like that anyway. Not a fan. Um, Largely because it contains Storm and Cavalry, who I, I hate for reasons. So, uh, I start with two regiments of Kindred Archers, one of which has the Heart Seeking Chant. I know that the standard is to take a horde, but having, you know, if, you have, if you've ever had your horde of archers shut down by a flying individual, it just makes you very nervous. And that's why I go. I went with two regiments. I think I've gone back to a horde now, but anyway. Two regiments of Kindred Archers with the Heart Seeking Chant. A horde of Theredian Sea Guard with the Dwarven Ale. I think I was just using up points there, but um, you never know, Dwarven Ale, useful. Um, keeping headstrong. Two regiments of Forest Shamblers. Now then, one Elven King, and I mounted him and gave him Blade of the Beast Slayer, and two regiments of Stormwind Cavalry. So this is the new formation King's Champions, um, and it gives the Cavalry Fury, and it gives the King uh, hitting on a two plus, which is ridiculous. Um, because if you give, so I give it in Blade of the Beast Slayer, so that means that any large infantry, monsters, large cavalry that he attacks, uh, he's hitting them on a 2 plus and damaging them most likely on a 2 plus because it gives him crush 2 as well. Um, so he's a guaranteed 4 or 5 wounds a turn. So he's a beast. The slight downside is you do have to take Storm and Cavalry, which are like paper. Now they, they do live, as Riley would say, in Weaver Town, so having Fury is great. But the problem is, as soon as they get hit, they lose all of their Thunderous, and they're basically just tall spears on a horse. Um, yeah, and I think they're really expensive. 215, 16 attacks. I just... I, I'm not a fan of Stormwind Cavalry. Um, anyway, but I've got two regiments of the buggers, so there we go. Uh, Forest Warden, and I gave him Reb's Grimmar of Unspeakable Darkness, so he's now Surge 7 for the Shamblers. And a nerfed Dragon Kindred Lord with a Boots Levitation. So this was um, the first time I tried the Dragon since the nerf. And I, it really does uh, reduce the efficiency. It's amazing, that five breath. Um, so this kind of list, as you, you recognise the type of list, it's kind of like a Tom Robinson light, isn't it, really? Um, I think it's okay. But mm, we'll see how it performs, I guess. So on to the Rackin list. So Martin... Um, by his own ambition, constructed the list based on the models that he has. <laughs> so this is the models he has. He has two hordes of Tunnel Slaves, one of which has the Healing Brute. He has three hordes of Nightmare. So these are the new, um, they're like Brutes with a Flamethrower and more Nerve. Uh, with a Breath Attack. So each horde's got 18 Breath Attack. As well as Crush 2 and various stuff. They're very unpleasant, but for a Rackin list, wow, they're expensive. Um, he's a Demon Spawn with Wings. Uh, a Warlock with the Inspiring Talisman and Bane Chant. So it comes with Natural uh, Lightning Bolt. Two Death Engines, each of which has the Vile Sorcery update, upgrade to give them a shooting attack. And three Weapon Teams, uh, one of which has the Storm of Lead, uh, giving it Piercing. So it's a pretty shooty list. It's got quite a lot of hard-hitting uh, infantry in it, uh, with a couple of hordes of, um, of uh, Chaff. So that's, that's 2,000 points of Ratkin. Pretty elite for a Ratkin list. So then, let's get on to the map. So it's a pretty standard map. It's one of the Epic Dwarf maps. Um, nothing too exciting. Uh, two height, six forests. Two height, two hills. Two high, four blocking terrain. Uh, both on one side, which is, I guess, interesting. 
one flat and one flight one height zero uh difficult terrain and two height one walls so the scenario we're playing was plunder so that's where you place uh five tokens equidistant along the center line 12 inches apart and then you each select one uh to be worth two points so there's the tokens i selected the one on the right which is the blue star and uh, my opponent selected the one on the left which is the green star to be worth two points and the others are worth one and this is how we deployed so i uh, go through my deployment first along the top so there's my king and there's my forest warden so they're facing off against that horrific line of breath attack which we'll come to in a minute there's the first stormwind regiment with the first forest shamblers under them the two kindred archer regiments the sea guard horde the other um, Stormwind, there's the dragon, and there's the other Shamblers. So basically I've positioned the Shamblers so they can vanguard up and hit the tokens, which is fair enough. They're loot tokens, not objective markers by the way, so you pick them up and you steal them. Okay, there's, uh, on the other side, there's the Nightmares in a horrific block, each with 18 breath attack. And there's uh, two weapon teams between them, so uh, it's over 60 breath attack in one uh, unit. Pretty nasty. There's the two tunnel slaves with uh, the two death engines between them. There's the warlock nestled in the back. Uh, weapon team in the right in that difficult terrain. And last but not least, on the right hand side, we have the demon spawn. And that was our deployment. On to turn one. So we rolled off and the elves won. And so I went first. Aha! After vanguarding, of course. I forgot to mention that. So this is the vanguard move, um, so the shambler just moved on the right hand side all the way up and on the left hand side they moved I think up to 18 inches away because the 18 inches is the effective range of breath attack which is 12 plus 6 inches of move, so just outside of that because they didn't want to be met with 60 points of breath. So uh, as I mentioned I got the first turn, so off onto that first turn we went. So the king uh, and the uh, forest warden uh, jumped up on the left. Uh, behind the forest so they couldn't be seen. The two storm winds moved forward, the archers moved up onto the hill so that they were at least 50% on, and the sea guard moved forward. And then the dragon uh, popped himself all the way over to the right so he was out of the line of sight of the demon. This is where we ended up. And then both archer hordes uh, unleashed on the, the uh, nightmares that you can see there doing four points of damage. Uh, and the sea guard uh, managed to get three points of damage onto that weapon team. Uh, but no waivers or anything like that. So that was the end of elf turn one. On to rack in turn one. So the three hordes of nightmares moved up, as did the weapon team. The two tunnel slave hordes moved up. Uh, and then the uh, weapon team and the warlock uh, moved across in the middle there. Uh, and everyone, everyone just moved up, basically. They all moved forward. No big surprise. Apart from Demon Spawn, who shifted to the right to be outside of the line of sight of the dragon, so at least I could attack him in the next turn, which is fair enough. I mean, thinking about that, this is where they ended up. Uh, realistically, I think a Demon Spawn out melees a dragon. He's got more attacks. I think a full frontal attack on the dragon might have been worth it, uh, rather than trying to play it cautiously. But, you know, I think if you're going to play a rack in force, you have to be quite aggressive, um, because you haven't got a lot of nerve. We well, have in the tunnel slaves, I suppose. You have got a lot of nerve, but you haven't got a lot of um, hitting power normally. Uh, but then this army is a bit different. What do I know? I don't know anything. So this is where they ended up. Um, the death engines uh, then unleashed upon the sea guard, doing six points of damage. And both the weapon team and the demon uh, shot at the shamblers who were in the forest. So of course, they're in cover, uh, doing a total of three points of damage. And on to elves, turn two. Okay, so elf turn two. The dragon uh, jumped down to the piece of difficult, difficult terrain there, so out of the line of sight of the demon, uh, but into the firing range of quite a bit of stuff down there. But there you go, you've got to take risks, I guess. Uh, the king, similarly on the left hand side, popped down um, out of the line of sight, but ready to attack next turn. And then uh, the rest of the elves kind of cowardly f <laughs> backed away outside of the uh, effective fire range. So both the horses and the shamblers backed up. Shamblers on the right picked up the loot token. They backed up. Um, and this is where everyone ended up. 
nobody else moved. Everyone was happy with where we were. So the two archer hordes again went into that nightmares regiment, uh, nightmares horde, and uh, managed to kill it, which is good for me. By this point, they don't have any movement penalty, and there's no cover penalty, so they were shooting out full effect. The sea guard uh, took aim at one of the death engines, doing four points of damage, and the dragon. Um, breathed on the war machine and killed it now i'm trying to work out why i didn't just charge it but i think i was possibly out of range no i think it was was it that it was hindered it was still triple attack so i'd still have killed it might have been out of range anyway it died just as well and i think that was it for elf turn two so on to rakin turn two so um my opponent split his forces and sent one um set of nightmares into the king or uh, towards the king since you couldn't charge out of line of sight and move the other two up to uh, try and claim this um, loot token in the middle the tunnel slaves then did their thing uh, and the one in the middle just moved up I don't I think they were out of range whereas the one on the right could actually charge those sea guard and did so then both death engines turned around to uh, unleash vile sorcery upon the dragon and the demon spawn on the right now that the uh, forest shamans were unprotected, uh, charged them in the forest. So hindered charge, but still 13 attacks on would have been fours and twos. Hmm. And this is where they ended up. So the uh, weapon team uh, did one point of damage to the forest shamblers. The tunnel slaves did an extra six points of damage to the uh, rather beleaguered sea guard. The demon unfortunately managed to kill my shamblers which is not very nice and the death engines did six points of damage to my dragon uh, on the left worth noting that the nightmares did zero points of damage to my king because he is a badass elf turn three so the king decided to take on uh, a whole horde of um, nightmares good luck you and then now i need to apologize to martin here because i committed what is a completely illegal move I think for some reason, we were, uh, I don't know, because you can move through friendly troops when you're moving, but you can't when you're charging. However, I've ignored that here, and the horses just literally charge right the way through those shamblers into the weapon team, which you can't do. Now, it is slightly relevant because the shamblers could just have moved to the side, moved three to the side, so they could have done it. Um, but at that point, it was a rather illegal move, so I, I have no idea why we didn't spot it, uh, but apologies to Martin. So with that bit of uh, blatant cheating out of the way, uh, the Sea Guard and the Stormwind then multi-charged the Tunnel Slave Horde. Uh, the Dragon decided not to face up to, well see, both Death Engines, a Weapon Team and a Nightmare Horde, a Breath Attack and pop back into the forest to get some cover. And this is where we ended up. Did anything else happen? Lots of other stuff happened. Oh no, that is what happened. Okay, so um, in the shooting phase, uh, both Arthur reg Archer regiments, Arthur Archer regiments went into uh, these nightmares, doing four points of damage, which is pretty good given they had cover. Um, on the right hand side, the dragon did two points of damage to the demon. On the left hand side, the king did four points of damage to the nightmares. The stormwind um, uh, completely destroyed the uh, weapon team, uh, therefore claiming that loot token, though they didn't pick it up. And the Stormwind and uh, Seaguard killed the Tunnel Slaves, allowing the Stormwind to turn to face the Demon, uh, stopping him from flanking the Seaguard, so that was all rather useful. On to Rakin turn 3. So these Hordes um, took advantage of the opportunity, and they are stronger in melee than they are in shooting, and went into both the King and the uh, Stormwind. Who will now lose a thunderous charge and therefore be useless. That's why I hate them. Uh, this uh, death engine popped up onto the hill to take some pot shots, and the tunnel slave horde uh, made use of the gap to attack the front archer regiment. Now it looks from this screenshot like he couldn't have made the move, but we tested it and he definitely could. Uh, so I'm not bothered about that. And then the demon went into the other stormwind regiment, and this is where everybody ended up. So in the shooting phase, um, the weapon team and death engine on the hill uh, killed off the um, sea guard horde, who, if you remember, already had 12 damage on them. So that is unfortunate. 
the other death engine uh, shot at my dragon but didn't do any damage. Hurrah! Uh, and the left, the um, nightmares did five points of damage to my king but didn't get away because his nerve is pretty high. I think it's a 15. I want to say 15, 17, 13, 15. Anyway, something like that. He is a beast. Uh, and the um, nightmares here did two points of damage to this Stormweed Regiment, which, regiment, which was uh, very disappointing. I think Martin's rolling was uh, not his best. And the Tunnel Slaves did two points of damage uh, to my archers, which is insignificant, but enough to turn off their shooting, which is irritating. Okay. Oh yes, and the uh, Demon Spawn uh, did four points of damage to this uh, Regiment of Stormwind, again turning off their Thunderous Charge. Okay, in Elf turn four, counter charging happened. So, uh, King went into Nightmares, Stormwind went into the Nightmares and the Demon, respectively. Uh, the archers counter charged the slaves. Stormwind turned to face the slaves. Now, they couldn't charge them because they couldn't see them, but they could be surged into them, which happened. Um, by the tree herder? I want to say forest warden. Forest warden? Tree herder. The cheap one. Anyway, by him. And then the dragon popped himself up. So, um, an inch away, but facing the demon, uh, which was probably quite uncomfortable if you happened to be that demon. This is where everybody ended up. Uh, the archers who could shoot on the hill uh, took out the death engine, which felt good. And this combat, uh, disappointingly, uh, didn't get the kill, but we did let up, took them up to 11 points of damage on that tunnel slave horde. Um, the stormwind managed four points of damage onto these nightmares, whereas the king killed the other nightmares. Uh, so I think he did. He took them up to eight points of damage, so four points per each turn, uh, and then just a really good. Um, a really good nerve roll. So the king, yeah, I mean, he's a guaranteed four or five points of damage uh, every turn onto a large infantry regiment. So, yeah, nasty business. Uh, and then the uh, other Stormwind did four points of damage to the Demon Spawn. Uh, onto Rakin, turn four. So the first thing that happened was obviously the now pretty damaged Nightmares countercharged these um, Stormwind. The Tunnel Slaves went back into the Archers. This Death Engine uh, jumped up on the hill to try and offer some fire support and the Demon went back into the Stormwind. He really needed to kill them, uh, otherwise there was going to be an issue. And this is where everyone ended up. So, first of all the weapon team did uh, some breath attack onto the Shamblers, um, doing two points of damage. Uh, in this combat, uh, six points of damage? Oh, an extra four points of damage onto the Stormwind, which wavered them. Which sounds good, except they have Fury. So yay, formation! Um, Tunnel Slays put an extra one point of damage uh, onto the Archer Regiment, which is uh, curtains for them next turn. And then uh, the Demon did manage to kill the Stormwind, which is a bit of a relief. I mean Stormwind, what are they called? It was a Stormwind. Um, and turned to face the Dragon, so at least uh, they had a fighting chance there. So on to Elf turn 5, is all getting a bit seat of the pants now. Uh, Stormwind uh, with Fury back into the Nightmares. Uh, another um, multi charge uh, from these guys onto the Tunnel Slaves. The Dragon, tired of dancing around, decided to just uh, man on man the Demon Spawn. Dragon on Demon action. Don't know if you've seen that video on the internet, but uh, send me a private message and I'll send you some links. And the King went into the Warlock uh, just because he was being annoying. He pretty much only had Lightning Bolt and. Um, and Bane Chant, but uh, Bane Chanting is pretty annoying, uh, so he thought, ah, let, let's just uh, knock him off. Plus, it's pretty much the only thing he could see, apart from the Nightmares, who were going to die anyway, because they already had eight points of damage. Um, and then the Forest Warden just kind of surreptitiously shuffled over uh, to claim the objective over here, the loot token. That's where we ended up. Uh, so the Archers had three points of damage onto the other Death Engine. Uh, the Stormwind predictably killed the Nightmares. Uh, amazingly, uh, the Warlock survived a King. Um, not being large infantry, that's not that surprising, but he was wavered uh, as well as disordered, so he was pretty much useless. Um, yep, Tunnel Slaves finally popped their clogs. And critically, the Demon Spawn got wavered by the Dragon. Um, quite a good roll um, for both damage and for nerve. And that really signalled a very sticky end. 
So Rack in turn five, there wasn't a great deal that uh, my opponent could do. So the Death Engine went into the Stormwind. I kind of forgot that it was actually um, a melee item as well, a melee piece as well as a, a ranged piece, um, which is a bit fatal really because they are brutally good when it comes to a melee. Weapon team moved down to do some shooting, and the wave of demon spawn just moved back onto that loot token, which is pretty sensible. So yeah, this is where they ended up. Um, the weapon team did f uh, an extra one point of damage into the archer horde. Not enough. The um, uh, death engine destroyed the storm wind, claiming the loot token, which is worth two. So at this point of the game, if you look at think about scoring, it's currently four one. Well, I haven't got any actually. Four zero. If he picks up the token at the end of the turn, which I think he did. Um. On to Elf turn 6, and my final turn. Crucial, I think we'll find. Uh, so the dragon then flew over into the forest to pick up that loot token. And we triple attacked the death engine. Um, so the king, uh, the forest shamblers, uh, and the forest warden uh, decided that they didn't like him having two points. Um, and these archers turned around in order to spread some covering fire onto the demon. So both the dragon and the archers then uh, breathed and shot at the demon and killed him, which was rather unfortunate. And the death engine also died. And then everyone picked up the tokens. So at that point, it's now 4 0 to me. Uh, so in Ratkin turn 6, unfortunately, there's only a weapon team and a warlock left on the field. So we were warlock popped up onto the hill. And both of them, at this point, you know, it's kill points. You need kill points for the tournament, so they tried to take out the most valuable unit they could see with the most damage, which was the um, Archer Horde, Archer Regiment rather, um, and unfortunately they, although they did four points of damage, they were unable to finish the job. Leading to a 4-0 victory to the Elves, hurrah! And that was the end of round two of that tournament. So, a pretty fun game, Mike was a great guy, um, his list, you know, it looks strong in terms of breath attack, but you need to be pretty close for breath attack. And against uh, um, a ranged force like mine, it was a really difficult matchup, I think. Uh, but really good match and really nice guy. Uh, we really enjoyed ourselves uh, and look forward to the next battle report soon. So, thanks for watching. See you soon on Death by Dragons. <laughs>